In the past 50 years, the number of overweight and obese Americans has steadily increased. Currently, 65% of U.S. adults are overweight and 30% are obese. Research suggests that a number of factors contribute to America's obesity epidemic, including increased fast food consumption and increasing portion sizes. Just 50 years ago, the average sized bagel weighed one ounce and a bottle of soda measured eight ounces. Today, the standard bagel weighs four ounces. That's four servings. And a vending machine bottle of soda is 20 ounces, or two and a half servings. The best way to maintain a healthy diet and weight is to be informed. Reading food labels, measuring portion sizes, and keeping a food diary are all ways to ensure that your caloric intake is within a healthy range. Guidelines can be found at choosemyplate.gov. For this lab, you will be keeping a food diary for three days. Remember that you're trying to learn more about your current eating habits, so this is not the time to eat differently or less than usual. You'll have plenty of time to change your habits afterwards. A food diary must be accurate to fully understand the connection between diet, weight, and overall health. For the three days that you track your diet, make sure that you keep your food diary with you at all times. It is very easy to underestimate portion sizes and forget about between-meal snacks hours after they've been eaten. In the following slides, we'll offer some tips for keeping an accurate food diary. Although this may seem like a daunting task at first, keeping a food diary for only three days can help you make smart food choices for the rest of your life. Before we track a few meals on our sample food diary, here are tips for gauging portion sizes when no measuring tools are available. Pasta, cereal, and other dry grains are usually measured by three-fourths to one dry cup, not by the plate or bowl. A bowl of cereal is about two to three servings. A single serving of cheese is one ounce. One ounce of cheese equals one large deli slice, or a block the size of a domino. Most sandwiches have two to four servings of cheese. Most beverages are measured by one eight-ounce cup. Eight fluid ounces equals one half of a standard tall glass. A big gulp soda is eight servings. One serving of meat measures four ounces. Four ounces of meat equals a deck of cards. Most restaurant cuts are three to four servings. Now, let's track some sample meals. For breakfast, I usually have a bowl of cereal with milk and a glass of orange juice. To see how it measures out, I first pour my usual bowl of cereal. Remember that now is the time to learn about your usual eating habits, so make sure that you eat your usual amounts. Next, I'll measure out the cereal from my bowl into measuring cups if I have enough, or cup by cup into another bowl if I don't. It turns out that I've poured two and a half cups of cereal, that is, 3.3 three-quarter cup servings. To get the calories for one bowl of cereal, I need to multiply the calories for one serving by 3.3. In this case, 130 times 3.3 equals 429. There are 429 calories in my usual bowl of cereal, not 130 as the nutrition label suggests for one serving. As I multiply the rest of the information, I find out that I am also eating 8.25 grams of fat, 561 milligrams of sodium, 82.5 grams of carbohydrates, 6.6 .6 grams of fiber, and 9.9 .9 grams of protein. Next, I measure my milk by first pouring it into a measuring cup, then pouring it on my cereal. The nutrition label suggests one half cup of milk per serving, but I eat more than one serving, 
so I'll probably use more than the recommended amount of milk. I'll pour one and a half cups of milk into the measuring cup and see how much I actually use. One serving of milk is eight ounces. I used 12 ounces or one half cups of milk on my cereal. So I need to multiply all of the nutritional information by 1.5. There are 150 calories and 8 grams of fat in one serving of whole milk. But I'm actually consuming 225 calories, 12 grams of fat, 52.5 milligrams of cholesterol, 187.5 milligrams of sodium, 18 grams of carbohydrates, and 12 grams of protein. Lastly, I pour my usual size glass of orange juice and then pour it into a measuring cup to see how much I poured. One serving of orange juice is 8 ounces, but I actually poured 13 ounces. That's 1.6 servings. Just as before, I simply multiply all of the nutritional information by 1.6 and get 176 calories, 41.6 grams of carbohydrates, and 3.2 grams of protein. When I add my three meal components together, I get 830 calories, 20.25 grams of fat, 52.5 milligrams of cholesterol, 748.5 milligrams of sodium, 142.1 grams of carbohydrates, 6.6 .6 grams of fiber, and 26.1 grams of protein. I had no idea that a breakfast of cereal, milk, and juice could equal over 800 calories. That's almost half of my daily diet. This is much higher than the 390 calories and 10.5 grams of fat that would total from one serving of each of these foods. Tracking meals that you eat out will be a little different than tracking the meals you eat at home. There are usually no nutrition labels on restaurant foods and it won't be possible to measure your portion sizes. At these times, you can use the quick tips at the beginning of this presentation to estimate the number of servings and ingredients in your food. Remember that restaurants tend to use a lot of butter, oil, and dressings, so be generous with your guesses. If you eat at a fast food or chain restaurant, you can probably get all of the nutritional information that you need from the chain's website or from cyberdiet.com a nutritional website that your TA will show you in lab. Our next example will get information from a company website. For my snack, I stopped at the coffee shop on campus where I ordered a chocolate chip cookie and a medium blended coffee drink. There was no nutritional information at the cafe, so I wrote down the exact items that I ordered in my food diary and looked up their website when I got home. The nutritional information on their website already had set serving sizes for each item, so I didn't have to do any multiplying here. It turns out that my drink had 590 calories, 24 grams of fat, 55 milligrams of cholesterol, 410 milligrams of sodium, 83 grams of carbohydrates, 3 grams of fiber, and 16 grams of protein. The cookie had 470 calories, 23 grams of fat, 25 milligrams of cholesterol, 330 milligrams of sodium, 62 grams of carbohydrates, 2 grams of fiber, and 6 grams of protein. This snack had a total of 1,060 calories and 47 grams of fat, more than half of my daily requirements. Keeping a food diary for just a few hours has already shown me that I need to change some of my eating habits. I've already consumed more than the USDA's recommendation of 1,800 calories per day for my age and activity level, and I've only eaten breakfast and a snack. After you complete your food diary, you may or may not choose to change some of your habits. Either way, you'll have a good profile of what your diet really looks like, and you'll know how to correctly read nutrition labels and portion your food accordingly.